My dear brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us this morning in your homes as we begin this powerful, powerful encounter called Holy Week. Know that our prayers and love surround you, and we feel your prayers and love coming from home. Since the very beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable work. Today we gather to herald with the whole church at the very beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered in his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following his footsteps so that being made partakers, companions, and friends as he walks to the cross, he may share with us also his resurrection and his life. At this time, we invite you, if you've um, gathered palms from outside or some sort of green leaf, to please um, hold us up as we have this blessing. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask you to sanctify these branches, the branches of our community here in Arizona and throughout the state and throughout the world. Help us as we follow Christ the King in exaltation. May he reach the eternal Jerusalem. May we join him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage upon the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. If anyone should say anything to you, say to them, the master is in need of them. And he will send them at once. This happened so that all that had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, behold your king comes meek and riding upon an ass, upon a colt, the fold of a beast of burden. And the disciples went as Jesus had ordered them to do. And they brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks along the road, while others cut branches from trees and strewed them along the road. And the crowds preceding him and all those following kept crying out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. And they asked, who is this? And the crowd replied, it is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. My friends, the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, like the crowds of old, let us process with Jesus into Jerusalem, going forth in faith.
Almighty and ever-living God, who was an example of humility for the human race to follow, and caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. With graciousness, help us to heed the lesson of patient suffering, and help us to merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet to Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man, 
and tell it. The teacher says, my appointed time draws near. In your house shall I celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you is about to betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after the other, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, but it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It's better that that man never would have been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink of the fruit of this vine, in the day when I drink it with you anew in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, this night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, Upon this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. So you could not keep watch with me for even an hour? Pray and watch that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is possible, allow this cup to pass without my drinking it. But your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? 
Behold, the hour is at hand. When the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners, get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arraigned a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately, he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, come and do what you're here for. Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide for me in a moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But how will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say, it must come to pass this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out against me as, as, with a, as though a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? For day after day I was teaching in the temple area, and you did not arrest me. But all this has to come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Jesus Christ. and the elders were assembled. Peter was following at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who, who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming upon the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, he deserves to die. Then they spat on his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophecy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? 
Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Clinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to, pop, to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why the field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded. Jesus Christ is by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas 
for Jesus called Christ. For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Then Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, his blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon, this man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from that cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, He saved him others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from that cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. 
Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. Jesus Christ is Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabatani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly. This was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day 
the one following the day of preparation. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, he has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
with our lives not perfect, with our lives sequestered, can we keep emptying ourselves into love? As he moves forward, as we hear this gospel, toward further betrayal, at Peter, who is always so stout-hearted, I will never betray you. How many times have we said that? Not me. Not me. The older I get, I've learned to never say never. I've learned to say not now. Not now. Because we don't know what we're going to do. We can have the perfect intention. But sometimes when life pushes back and stresses us out and makes us afraid, Sometimes we can be changed, not because we want to, but because we're human. And yet into that betrayal, he keeps moving lovingly, lovingly. Before Pilate, when Pilate ceases to be courageous, and sometimes in our lives, our leaders, and we ourselves as leaders, seek to be courageous. We try to be efficient, right? Because we're stressed out. But even into that, he keeps moving. Into being chosen to die over a known criminal. When we hold and close our eyes to the truth, he keeps moving. Bearing his cross. The poor man had suffered enough, don't you think? And they scourge him before he has to carry a heavy burden. And even into that, he keeps moving. And people of God, isn't that what love does? Love is what allows you and I to keep moving when we have no more breath, when we have no more strength, when we have no more sanity. It's allowing ourselves to fall into that love. It's what keeps us moving. Nailed to a cross. Nailed to a cross. Isn't that enough? And people are yelling and screaming. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Will he curse God? into all that pain, into all that abuse, into all that misunderstanding. And sometimes we have misunderstandings, right? It's human. We have misunderstandings. We're not always on the same page. But what do we do? Do we keep moving? Do we keep letting go? And into all that, that's what he does. He keeps moving. And even at the end, when he cries out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Was that cursing God? No. That was taking a breath. And people of God, do we take breaths? The same breath that came to us as we hear in the book of Genesis? When God scooped down and blew into that clay and said, Come alive. I fill you with compression and light. In this gospel, we see something very powerful. The light keeps moving into the darkness. And by virtue of our baptism, we are children of the light. And the question is, will we keep moving? Will we keep moving in this pandemic, in our relations with one another, in our world? One of the things this crazy pandemic is doing is what? At least it's doing it for me. Realizing what's truly important and what's not. What's worth obsessing about and what's not. And to let go and to keep moving. At the end of the life, what does it say? I didn't hear it say that he buried his spirit. I heard the gospel say he delivered over his spirit. And people of God, that is how you and I keep moving. We keep giving over our spirit, our, ex our exhaustion, our anxiety, our fear, our mistakes. We keep giving them over to the light 
of Christ that is within us by virtue of our baptism that is in us and that flows and it washes our eyes clear so that we can see and washes our hands clean so that we even though we are socially distanced can keep on loving isn't that what God does even in coronavirus people of God Jesus Christ keeps moving. Let us do the same. Amen. Amen. Take straight faith to keep moving. Let us stand together as children of the light and say together, I believe in the Lord God. Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, let thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God. Life of my life, true God, God, true God. God. We got to do my name, consubstantial to the Father, through Him and all things to me, for us, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was a part of the Virgin Virginia and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to the temple and was seated at the right hand of all. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of God, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. Who has spoken through the cross? I believe in the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of him and the life of the world to come. Almighty God, as we enter into this holy week, allow us to remember the needs of your people. Our response for Palm Sunday is, Lord, you have saved us by your passion. Lord, you have saved us by your passion. For the church, that as we celebrate Holy Week in the midst of a suffering world, we see the dying and rising of Jesus as inspiration in our lives. To remember how much we are loved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord you, you have, have saved, saved us by your passion. For the world, that leaders will work together to share resources and information that will stop the coronavirus from taking more lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord you, you have saved, saved us by your passion. In thanksgiving for all home caregivers, doctors, nurses, and other first responders, that they remain healthy and have all of the supplies and the support needed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you have saved us by your passion. For the suffering and the dying, that the sick will find relief from their pain and meaning in their suffering in the passion of Jesus, and those who are dying will find greater reason for hope in the resurrection of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you have saved us 
is by your passion. For the University of Arizona, that all students, faculty, and staff will find healthy routines in this unexpected time of online instruction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you have saved us by your passion. For Gilbert G. Fimbres, Joe G. Mays, and the deceased members of the Mission San Jose Dominican Sisters, who we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, you have saved us by your passion. We pause to take a moment to lift up the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you have you have saved us by your passion. At this time, it's our custom to recite our Newman Center's stewardship prayer. We invite you to listen and pray along with us. Loving God, your gifts are abundant and your care is deep. You are the giver of every ability, possession, and of life itself. Your spirit is upon us, and we have been anointed by your grace. Help us to receive your gifts gratefully, to care for them wisely, and to share them generously. Allow our impact of service, skills, and support to build up your kingdom and to be an encounter with your spirit of truth and love. Amen. Amen. Loving God, you accept the offering of your Son for our sins. Now we place before you all these intentions and those in our hearts for the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In these uncertain times, we ask you to prayerfully consider how you can still support our Catholic Newman Center financially. We rely on the weekly collection at Masses to cover the costs of staff, utilities, and ministries. This includes the residence for the four Dominican friars and the convent for our two Dominican sisters. Our online giving program can be found at uacatholic.org slash donate. And we also have a Venmo account. Username is uacatholic. Thank you for your consideration and your generosity. We look forward to praying with you all during this holiest of weeks. Thank you. 
the sacrifice that we offer to the God, the loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and good and all of His holy church. The passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once and for all, may we feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted the unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased for us our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as a joyful celebration. In a similar way, when someone was entered into the chalice and gave him thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Grant by the power of the Spirit of your love, 
you be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we have in you. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and the entire people, may we always walk in your ways with faith and hope, and may we strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone home to you, who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your grace. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant us also when our earthly pilgrimage is done to come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. We commune with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, St. Dominic and Catherine, Francis and Claire, Ignatius and Teresa, St. Thomas More and St. John, and all the saints shall praise you and exalt you in Jesus Christ.
you see the goodness of the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away into the world. How blessed we are to be called the Supper of Life. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy to be joined in the church of God. I don't say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Father, this chalice cannot pass me without my drinking it. Your will be done. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred, sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, lead us to where you call. We ask this in Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. a few announcements. We invite you to join us in prayer during this week leading up to Easter. On Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter, Sun, Easter Saturday at 8 a.m., we will begin the days with Tenebrae, a beautiful chanted morning prayer that Dominicans around the world have celebrated for centuries. So that's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 8 a.m. Our Holy Thursday Mass of the Lord's Supper will be live streamed on Facebook at 6 p.m. and premiered on YouTube by 8 p.m. Good Friday's Liturgy of the Lord's Passion will be at the same times. 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Our Easter Vigil Mass on Saturday will begin slightly later at 6.30 p.m. on Facebook Live and then premiered on YouTube at 8.30 p.m. On Easter Sunday morning, our Mass will begin at 11 a.m. on Facebook and will be premiered by 2 p.m. on YouTube. Please see our website at uacatholic.org for a reminder of all of this and more. God bless you all. You are in our thoughts and prayers very specially this week. Please keep us in your The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, upon this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered, to, to be delivered into the hands of wicked, so that to submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And my God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. God. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted and I will praise I will praise him. He is exalted.